Hey everyone! So today I wanted to give you an update on all of the sunflowers that I'm growing in containers. They have started to open up, so some of them have been blooming for maybe about a couple weeks now. Some of them haven't officially opened up, but they do have buds on them. So I thought it would be a good time to kind of go around the garden and show you what I'm growing this year. So I am definitely growing more varieties than I did last year. I think last year I had, did I just have strawberry blonde? I might have only had one variety last year, whereas this year I have four different varieties and I'm growing them in a variety of containers. So I have some in my elevated beds, I have some in grow bags, and then I have some that are in just like regular plastic and ceramic type pots. So I would figured I'd talk to you a little bit about what I'm growing, we'll walk around and take a look at all of them, and I will also give you, we'll go over the best practices for growing sunflowers in containers. And then I'll also talk about the best practices that I'm not actually following. So the four varieties that I'm growing in my garden this year, the first one is the Strawberry Blonde, which is the sunflower that I grew last year. I got the seeds from Johnny Seed and I just used whatever I had left over for this year. That is a branching type of sunflower and I'll put an image up on the screen so you can see what it looks like because again, not all of the flowers I'm gonna show you today are actually blooming. Um, so I think, like I said, that was the only one I grew last year. I am growing it again this year as well. And then the ones that are new to me, so also from Johnny's Seed, I swear when I ordered it, it was called Moulin Rouge, and then when I actually got the seeds, it said Rouge Royale, and that's what it says on the site now, and I can't find Moulin Rouge. So I don't know if they had to do a name change or something like that, if it is the exact same seed or flower type, just a different name, but what I got on the seed packet said Rouge Royale. That is also a branching variety. Um, then I got Chocolate Cherry, which I'm pretty sure I did not get that from Johnny Seed. I think I got that one from Chalet Nursery, so just a local nursery here near Chicago. I think I just saw it and had to get it, as happens quite often with seeds and plants in general. Um, so I have that one as well. And then the last one is the Sunridge Summer Province. And this one I also got from Johnny Seed. Now this one is different for a few reasons. One, it is a single stem where the other varieties are all branching. And also these could be planted much closer together. I think it was like four to six inches spacing and the other ones were like 18 to 24 if recommended. Not that anything is spaced as recommended in my garden anyway, uh, but I'll show you where I put some of the single stem ones that are close together and I'm really happy so far with how they've turned out. Now, something else different with the Summer Sunridge Province is that it's all yellow. And I thought last year and really this year when I was getting my seeds that I didn't really love yellow sunflowers as much as I loved <clears throat> the ones that were more unique. So the ones that had some red in them, the chocolate ones are brown for example, but now I'm so happy that I have them in my garden because nothing else is really yellow that I have in here. So to have that addition of color to the garden has just been fantastic. So I have refound my love for the pure yellow sunflower. All right, I've shifted a little bit because the sun was shining directly in my face, so this is a little bit better. Um, but just a few other things I wanted to mention is that all of these sunflowers are just standard sunflowers. None of them are miniature or dwarf varieties. They all are expected to get over five feet tall, which some of them already are, and I'll show you that in just a bit. For reference, I am five foot four. I also direct sewed all of them outside, so I didn't start any inside. The only reason I did that is because that's what I've done so far, and that's what it says is the recommended method is direct sewing, but I might try to transplant some because that way I can get some blooms early because these are definitely some of the later blooming flowers in the garden, which is typical of sunflowers, but if I can get some earlier blooms, especially with our shorter growing season, I would love to do that. That's why I start my dahlias inside early so I can have blooms that just last a little bit longer in my garden. So I think that's everything I wanted to go over right now. Let's go ahead and I will show you what my sunflowers look like in my garden. Let's start with these here in this elevated bed. So this is my shortest elevated bed. Um, it's only a couple feet off the ground and in it I have the Sunrich sunflowers. I'm not going to say the whole name every time because that is way too long. But these are the single, single stem varieties. You can tell that they are not yet opened up, but the buds are formed on the top of them. And I did space them the recommended four inches apart down here. I also have some nasturtiums, which aren't looking too happy. I was thinking about pulling these at some point soon. Um, but I also have the fire pot 
dahlias in here, which are absolutely beautiful. Um, so let's see how many did I fit in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total sunflowers. And I can't wait for them to open up because I think it'll look really nice just to have giant wall of sunflowers on the side of my garden. Now, something I have to do, um, because obviously when they have the flower heads on them, they will be much heavier than they currently are. Let me show you my current staking setup, which I think is fine, but not the best. So I just have two poles from my greenhouse that broke last year, but I saved the poles for staking. So I just put one on either side and then I have some twine here. Now what I need to do is actually like crisscross the twine so that it's a bit more tight and snug up against each of these sunflowers. And I think that'll hold them in place a little bit better. I also need to secure this string at a certain point. Like I want this to actually be up higher on the sunflowers because I already have one down lower. So I wanna do a little bit of retooling of the support system before they actually bloom, which means I should probably do that, you know, today. Now this sunflower I have here in a plastic pot, the recommended container size um, for kind of standard sunflowers is about five to 10 gallons. This is definitely not in that range. I'm pretty sure it's, I don't know, maybe I'd estimate three gallons. I think it's about eight to 10 inches in diameter here. Um, also interesting about this one, so one, I didn't label any of them because I figured eventually they'd bloom and I know what they are. This one here though, so I swear the only like pure yellow one I got was the Sunrich sunflowers. This one does have a little bit of red inside of it, so I don't know if maybe this was a strawberry blonde and it's just more on the blonde than strawberry side, or if this is a Sunrich and I just didn't remember that I planted one in this pot, so not really sure. Um, but you can see here, this one has been blooming already. This head has lost all of its blooms. I think I'm gonna leave it on and let that seed, um, go to seed so I can gather some seeds for next year as well. But this one here was the one that made me realize I do want more pops of yellow in my garden. Over here by my cart, I have one sunflower on this side in this black pot, and then the exact same pot on the other side with another sunflower in it. I don't know if it's the same variety because again, I did not label, um, but you can see here's the size of this pot. Again, I would say it's about eight inches in diameter, maybe about three gallons, so definitely not recommended. And then for staking on this one, I, so I wasn't expecting these to get as tall as they are right now. I mean, this one is a few inches taller than me. So I don't think it's six feet yet, but it's getting pretty close. And so when I moved them over here, I'm now not moving them anywhere else. And I was going to tie this to the cart. I still am, I think. But what I noticed was happening is my morning glory, which has taken over the top of the cart, just as I intended, started to grow towards the sunflower. And at first I thought I might have to make sure that does not happen, but then I looked it up online and I saw a bunch of photos of morning glory growing on sunflowers and it looked really pretty. So I don't know if it's the best to have the morning glory growing up, but I'm wondering if it'll actually give it some support. And once they all start blooming, I'm excited to see how that's going to look. So here, again, it has the largest bud about to open there, and then a few smaller buds below it. So this is actually my second tallest sunflower. My tallest one is right over there. So here we are now on the other side of my cart. So again, the pot, it's the same one that's over here just a black pot about eight inches in diameter and it's on the ground and you can see how tall the sunflower is actually let me go ahead and just stand next to it and then you can get an idea of my height next to the giant sunflower so that was me next to the sunflower you can see how tall it is and the bud there is ready to burst now, 
if, because it'll probably be a few days between filming this and actually getting it up onto YouTube. So if in between that time, these do bloom, which they might, I will try to throw in some clips as well. So these are the sunflowers on my front deck. I have, let's see, nine of the ones in the elevated bed right over there and then three other ones. So I have 12 total here and then I think I have five out back. So let's go take a look at those. We're on the back deck now, which became the garden filled with the excess plants that couldn't fit up front, but I couldn't bear to get rid of. And so I have, I think, five total sunflowers over here, which I've not been taking care of these as much as I have in the ones up front. And what I mean by that is I haven't really fertilized these. I have two in these bags, which I wouldn't normally put two together. I haven't really been checking for pests regularly. This is like the very, very low maintenance garden. So yeah, it's just also interesting to kind of see the difference between the sunflowers and how they do when I take care of them and when I ignore them. So first off, well, I guess I'll show you kind of how they're growing. So I have two in this 10 gallon bag. This is a seven gallon bag, which I also have two in. And then I have one wooden stake in each with just twine uh, twirled around it. So again, not the best staking method. You can see this one here is already starting to go crooked, but it's resting on the wall. So I'm fine with that. This one I've done nothing to. It hasn't really grown much. I mean, it's much smaller obviously than the other ones. So I'm just kind of seeing what happens. Um, but then these, since they are blooming, I know what they are. So this here is the strawberry blonde. Let me show you it down there as well. So that's a strawberry blonde. It has deep red around the inside of the petals and then changes to golden yellow on the outside. Then we have the chocolate cherry here. So this one is sadly resting against the wall, but you know what, it's still upright. So we're gonna take that. But you can see here, all of the petals are basically kind of that like brownish, reddish color. Kind of similar to the inside of these, but without the gold on the outside. So we have another bud here, opening up there and then one over there. Now, as far as maintenance and care for my sunflowers, obviously they're sunflowers, they like sun. So you wanna make sure they are in an area that's gonna get full sun about six to eight hours at least of sun a day. Again, my gardens are on the east and west side, so they don't get as much full sun as they would on the south, but they still get the minimum required hours to keep all the full sun plants happy. Um, for water, that kind of changes based on which container they're in. Essentially, all of them need to be watered at least once a day, except for the one in the elevated bed, because obviously that container is a lot larger. It can hold on to water a lot longer than the smaller containers. The other containers definitely watered once a day, so the small pots and the grow bags, and the grow bags I've actually found during the highest heat of summer need to be watered twice a day. So I just kind of know that I come outside um, like mid-afternoon and give them another drink of water if we're in like the 90s or a few of the 100 degree days that we've had. Um, for fertilizer now, a lot of the things I've read say that you don't really need to give a ton of fertilizer to sunflowers, but for me, because I'm container gardening, a lot of the containers that I'm growing with sunflowers in are quite small. Uh, they will go through nutrients very quickly. There's not as many nutrients to offer in a smaller container. So, well, the back deck like I said, it's my deck where I don't really do anything, so I haven't fertilized those at all, which has been just kind of interesting to see the difference between those. Whereas the ones up front, I am fertilizing, i say about once every two weeks with just like a general all-purpose fertilizer that I have there. I'm trying to think of anything else care-wise. I've kind of shown you my staking support systems. Again, I could definitely get a little bit better at some better quality supports for my sunflowers, but they're doing fine so far. I guess too, in all of my containers, I started with uh, probably I'd say about like two thirds of potting soil and then a third compost. Again, not my own compost because I don't have that yet, but compost that I got from a local garden center. Um, and that seems to keep them pretty happy as well. Um, things I'm gonna do differently next year. I will probably try out even more varieties. I will not dislike the full yellow varieties and I will definitely label because even though yes at some point they will bloom and I will hopefully know which type they are I won't really know until 
like July or August when they actually do bloom. So I will try to get better at labeling and like I said I might actually try starting some inside and transplanting them outside as well. So I think that's going to be everything for today's video. I really enjoyed, I grew up loving sunflowers so I've enjoyed being able to have them in my container garden as well. You know I can't have fields full of sunflowers up here but even just having a handful in the garden brings me a lot of joy. So if you have any questions or if you have any tips for growing sunflowers in your own garden let me know down below or if you have any varieties that you love that I should try out next year let me know below and I will see you in the next video.